I further note your government's decision to break new ground in monetary policy and inaugurate a new currency backed by gold and other asset reserves as compelling proof of your excellency's irrevocable intent to usher in a new era of economic recovery and transformation. <laughs> Mr. President, you have our support, our prayers, and our solidarity. Yeah. It is clear, Dr. Mnangagwa, that you have no hesitation whatsoever in doing the complex, challenging work of laying a robust structural basis for sustainable growth in investment, industrialization, productivity across every sector and inclusive development in Zimbabwe and in our region, working with the rest of the leaders. The consistency of your vision is reflected by your intervention at the Pan-African level, where our countries have ratified the Africa Continental Free Trade Area as a commitment to pursue integration, promote greater inter-Africa trade, and enable Africa to be a global economic powerhouse. As contained in the Green Minutes. On economic and trade cluster, I wish to inform that the two sides reached consensus on four memoranda of understanding which are ready for signing. These include the MOU between Kenya, Bureau of Standards, and the Standards Association of Zimbabwe, SAS. This MOU seeks to establish a framework for exchange of a scientific and technical knowledge, as well as enhance capabilities of the two institutions. Secondly, the MOU on cooperation in the field of transport and transport infrastructure. The objective of the MOU is to enhance cooperation in development of road transport infrastructure and promote private sector investment in, in, in infrastructure development. The third MOU is between Kenya Investment Authority and Zimbabwe Investment Development Authority Agency, ZIDA. The objective of the MOU is to enhance cooperation between the two institutions and to strengthen economic, technological, and investment relations. The MOU will also facilitate exchange of information on investment potentials and promote bilateral foreign direct investments in the two countries. The fourth MOU is on bilateral cooperations in agriculture and livestock development. The objective of the MOU is to enhance food security through technological development, transfer, research, and training. On this cluster, we further agreed to continue advancing negotiations on pending instruments in the field of trade and investment, air services, maritime and shipping exploration, mining and metallurgy, renewable energy, water and irrigation, customs administration, and mutual assistance. The session also agreed to accelerate implementation of instruments signed in 2022, which include cooperative development, tourism, and wildlife conservation. On the social cluster, the fourth JPPC reached agreement on three memorandums of understanding, which are ready for signing. These include the MOU in the field of basic education, training and research. This MOU addresses higher and tertiary education, training, skills and human capital development, science, technology and innovation, TIVET, and the collaboration between councils of higher and tertiary education of Zimbabwe and Kenya. The second MOU in this cluster is between the Republic of Kenya and the Republic of Zambia on cooperation in the field of health, the objective of this instrument is to facilitate cooperation in the area of professional education and technical uh, training of health. 
The third MOU is between the Public Service Commission of the Republic of Zimbabwe and the Kenya School of Government in the field of capacity development in the public service. The MOU will enable the two institutions to enhance human capital development and management, including capacity development, joint research, and public service transformation. The session also agreed to advance pending negotiations in the following sectors, affordable housing and promotion of appropriate building materials and new technologies, culture and arts, twinning arrangements between the counties in Kenya and provinces and districts in Zimbabwe, urban and metropolitan development, labor and employment, training of cardiovascular perfusionists between Paririnyatwa group of hospitals from Zimbabwe and Tenwek Hospital from Bomet. In the same cluster, the ministers agreed to bolster implementation instruments signing in 2022, signed in 2022, which include youth affairs and promotion of women empowerment. It was agreed that to keep track of decisions agreed at the fourth JCC stressed the imperative of not only signing instruments, but the need to ensure they are operationalized. In this regard, the two sides reached an agreement on the implementation modalities of the finalized and existing MOUs. The two sides will be expected to form joint technical committees that will develop a comprehensive framework for their regular monitoring and evaluation. My co-chair and I further agreed that Kenya will convene the next session of the midterm review of the fourth session during the first quarter of 2025. Pleased to join you today for this consultative forum between the executive and the constitutional commissions and independent offices. It is a demonstration of our administration's determination to strengthen cooperation, collaboration, and partnership with all state agencies as envisaged in the constitution. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, delivering development as underpinned by the bottom-up economic transformation agenda requires input from all players. There is no development specifically for the executive, the legislature, the judiciary, or the CCIOs. We only have one development plan of transforming Kenya together. The executive values the work of the CCIOs in socio-economic development, especially in bringing balance through objective oversight. But a lame or struggling institution cannot check the excesses of the executive in the spirit of promoting transparency and accountability for public good. It will be prone to manipulation and interference in its decisions. President William Ruto has on a number of occasions said that constructive criticism of his administration will enable him to deliver better on the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. It is a requirement for democracy, rule of law, and ultimately good governance. Joining you for this conversation, therefore, is a step towards vibrant CCIOs established on solid and sound structures in fulfillment of the Constitution. Indeed, at the end of this forum, we look forward to development and adoption of the framework of cooperation and engagement between the national government, the county governments, and the CCIOs. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, while the executive, the legislature, the, the, the judiciary, constitutional commissions, and independent offices are autonomous in the discharge of their mandates. We converge on transforming the socio-economic lives of our single employer, the people of Kenya. On this basis, we have no choice but to partner and consolidate our program and project interventions on development. This will be achieved through creation of a complementary ecosystem as opposed to fractured and segmented approaches to development. Indeed, 
Goal 16 of Agenda 2030 underscores the importance of strong and effective institutions in building peaceful and inclusive societies. Such regular consultations are not only for receiving feedback, but also understanding our individual strengths and strategizing together. Our destiny is defined. We cannot afford disjointed strategies. On this note, I want to acknowledge the importance of CCIOs in data collection and reports under various thematic areas. It will be more impactful when you align your strategic plans and priorities to the better plan. While we assure you of autonomy in your work, we encourage truth premised on objectivity and sanctity of data as opposed to alarmist subjective reports. This will help us make the necessary adjustments. Again, as directed by the executive order number two, we are ready to work with you in implementation of recommendations of your reports. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we are aware that one of the key issues that impairs optimal performance of CCIOs is limited funding. Past allocation in some cases have only made the basic operational needs of CCIOs as opposed to substantive projects and programs. When staff draw salaries without work, it is, a, it is a short change to the taxpayer. There is no value on investment. In the current financial year, we have increased allocation of the CIOs as opposed to the previous financial year. Because we want to promote financial independence, we'll continue working with the legislature to ensure more funds to enable you implement programs complementing our development plan. This is a long side review of laws and other frameworks to strengthen your mandates. Progressive increment of funding is possible given that our economy has stabilized and is now on an upward trajectory. My office is ready to work with you as outlined by the executive order number two of 2023 and other frameworks that direct us to collaborate for efficiency and effectiveness in service delivery. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as we meet here today, terms of office for a number of commissioners in some CCIOs are ending soon. Such leadership gaps, if not addressed, will hamper discharge of the mandates of the CCIOs. While the law provides for the procedures of appointment of commissioners and other senior officers, we are ready to work with you in unlocking any possible delays to expedite the process through, re through the requisite state agencies. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to confirm and affirm the executive's commitment to close working relationship relations with constitutional commissions and independent offices. It is a requirement that we commit to fulfill. Let me thank you for your availability for this meeting. We value your feedback and look forward to enriching to an enriching conversation. It is now my pleasure to declare this consultative forum officially open. And